Hey everyone, good morning and welcome to Thursdays at David's. I'm Alexi and today I have a, pan- a panel with me. Um, Can you please introduce yourselves? I'm B-Boy. Hi, I'm Luis. I'm Dar. Hello, I'm Alay. I am Matthew. Hello, I'm Bianca. Um, good morning everyone and thank you for coming. Today we will talk about museums, specifically defining their purpose and perspectives. So there's a debate on the me- definition of museums at hand. Um, why is this a relevant topic today? Anyone want to start this off? Yeah, Alexi, so there's been a debate recently. Um, the International Council of Museums has actually had the definition of a museum for a really long time. So this definition is, a museum is a non-profit, permanent institution in the service of society and its development, open to the public, which acquires, conserves, researches, communicates, and exhibits the tangible and intangible heritage of humanity and its environment for the purposes of education, study, and enjoyment. So a lot of people have been saying that this is a very outdated definition of a museum and has pushed for a movement to redefine it. Um, In response to that, the International Council of Museums actually had uh, several proposals from different countries and an election to vote for the new definition of what a museum should be. And when they had the elections in September 7, they ended up with this new definition. Museums are democratizing, inclusive, and polyphonic spaces for critical dialogue about the past and the futures. Acknowledging and addressing the conflicts and challenges of the present, they hold artifacts and specimens in trust for society, safeguard diverse memories for future generations, and guarantee equal rights and equal access to heritage for all people. So museums are not for profit, they are participatory and transparent and work in active partnership with and for diverse communities to collect, preserve, research, interpret, exhibit, and enhance understandings of the world, aiming to contribute to human dignity and social justice, global equality, and planetary well-being. So comparing these two definitions, we see that the the new one is definitely more political. It's taking a more active stance in terms of social justice and just overall global uh, well-being. And this actually ended up with a mixed reaction from audiences. Um, Some people are criticizing this political tone, um, saying that it's an ideological manifesto and they're expressing concerns that it doesn't address the traditional functions of a museum. Uh, On the other hand, people are defending this new definition, uh, saying that Museums are political regardless because they're political if they side with the marginalized, they're political if they don't. So this new definition is very uh, representative of the 21st century, actually. Uh, We also have movements such as the new hashtag trending, uh, hashtag museums are not neutral, where people are defending the political stances that uh, museums are taking in the 21st century. So bringing this question back to the panel, do you think museums should be neutral? Um, I think in this day and age, uh, in 21st century, people are already be more active, especially with a lot of people being engaged in media. And one of its, uh, uh, one of the f- more famous uh, um, debates is yes, should museums take a political stance or not? Yes, for me, I think pe- uh, the museum should take a political stance because. They are either representing uh, a group of people who have their uh, who who want to uplift their own principles, such as global warming, where wherein museums cater to those who want to share a message about global warming. Uh, others can also share their message through uh, women equality, where there are a lot of movements that the museums are able to be the medium in order to project that kind of movement. I also think that museums should be political because uh, today nothing cannot be politicized. Everything is affected by politics and being apolitical uh, would reek of privilege. And museums have a platform where they could uh, really share with many people specific political stances. And uh, that's not on the consumer to... Really, uh, it's not on the consumer to go there and have to enjoy it. It's really more of the museum putting what they believe out there, and whoever wants to consume it the way they want to, uh, that's on them. 
I think that although they should be political, it's also something that um, there's a lot of gray areas in because there's also the people who control the museum, of course. So maybe if they were to be political, it would be their side that the people who sort of maybe like patron the museum or those who own the museum, it will be their side that they're trying to project onto the people. So I think in a way, um, it's also their responsibility to be sort of objective and present everything to the public and not only the sides that they're pushing for. Thank you very much, panelists, for starting us off. Um, so provided the current debates we have, um, we would like to pose the questions. Are museums merely repositories then for cultural heritage and venues of artifact preservation? Or are they first and foremost venues for cultural education? Should they actively take a stance on political issues through programs and through its collections curation? Um, can you guys further illustrate this with giving us an example? Yes, so for today we'll talk about the National Museum of Fine Arts. So the National Museum of Fine Arts was originally designed as the public library by Ralph Harrington Dewan. Uh, he was the American consulting architect of the Bureau of Public Works. And construction began in 1918, but it was suspended several times because of a lack of funds. When it was decided that the building should be used by the legislature, uh, the revisions of the plans was then entrusted to Juan Arliano, who was the supervising architect of the Bureau. So it was used by the Senate, but was then a casualty during the bombing in 1945. It was reconstructed the year after, in 1946, following original plans, but with minor revisions. And in mid-1996, the Senate of the Philippines moved out of the building, and in 2003, renovations started to transform it into the National Museum of Fine Art. So I'll just mention the mission and vision of the museum so we can um, have a better grasp of um, the institution. So their mission is a Filipino nation unified by a deep sense of pride in their common identity, cultural heritage, and natural patrimony, and imbibed with the spirit of nationalism and strong commitment to the protection and dissemination of legacy. And their mission is to acquire, document, preserve, exhibit, and foster scholarly study and appreciation of works of art, specimens, and cultural and historical artifacts. To reflect their vision and mission, some of the displays that were present in the museum, like it's a really ver a wide range of paintings and artworks. Some ranging from the 18th century, which were commissioned by the church. We have some from the 19th century, such as the Spolarium, which is the late Spanish colonial period. We have some from pre-modernism. There's some that depict the atrocities of war. And there's some postmodern works, too. There's a lot of avant-garde work present there. So it's a w really a wide range of artworks that are exhibited in the museum. So given what you guys now know about the National Museum of Fine Arts, um, do you think the National Museum is objective or does it have a specific perspective when it comes to art? Um, there are a lot of perspectives. Um, uh, we can start with a socio, uh, socio-cultural and economic perspective. So we can see this with, for example, Amor Solis Gallery. Um, Amor Solis is known for his um, art artworks with the uh, Filipino landscapes, Philippine landscapes. Um, they often portray uh, traditional Filipino customs, culture, um, occupations, uh, events, and it's like an. It was said to be an imagined sense of nationhood in counterpoint to the American colonial rule. Um, it's also important to note that uh, this was. Um, uh, very important to the formation of Filipino national identity. So more on that, he's also known for his artworks depicting the Filipino woman. So for example, is the fruit gatherer or the Dalagang Bukid. So it's kind of like deviating from the Western standards and um, he's focusing more on the image of the Filipino. He's bringing it into light. And again, this is consistent to the formation of the Filipi Filipino identity. Um, there was also uh, a gallery of his sketch portraits. So there he kind of like drew uh, the people that he saw around him. So um, them doing their everyday tasks, um, how their conditions, uh, yeah, like that. 
to add to that, Bea, similar to uh, Amar Solo is also Luna's gallery. Uh, his gallery shows his works uh, during his time in Europe and his time in Japan. Uh, when I visited there, there were many landscapes, painting p- portraits that depict landscapes of the countries he visited. Also, it is also uh, good to note that most of his portraits are of European men and women. But I would like to ask you though, is the exhibit just a collection of his works? While it seems that the gallery does not take a political stance, his works already propose a certain message. Well, we can see that Juan Luna is a Philippine artist, a sculptor, and a, an activist during the Philippine Revolution in the 19th century. So his works asserted a sense of nationalism. This can be an example of this is the Spolarium, which is located in the second floor of the National Museum. So the Spolarium, yes, it is painted by a national artist, Juan Luna, but the Spolarium also exhibits a certain message message about nationalism, struggle, and a message of protest against the colonizers. So aside from that, we can also see that most of the exhibits that were there were about famous specific national artists. So how, what about the arts of the masses? Uh, is the art for the masses or are they just exploiting the image of the poor? Yeah, those I, I think those are valid questions because what about like um, the graffiti, the graffitis? Because they say it'll never be in museum. So what can we get from that? Yeah, that's true. I feel like there are a lot of things that are not represented in the museum, such as uh, modern art. Yes, there are uh, a lot about um, abstract art in the museum. But how about the art that we see in uh, the streets, the murals? Uh, Aside from this, going back with Luna, for uh, although the works of Luna seem to show that his European life do not take a political stance, his other works like the Spolarium show a very strong political perspective. So are the exhibits just social cultural or is it just arts for the culture and history? So how about you, uh, Luis? What do you think about it? To add on the stuff like graffiti or social mass art uh i think we can all agree that art is very hierarchical correct and uh, museums are one of the at the top of the hierarchy so art by the masses or specifically graffiti will really have trouble making its way through the hierarchy it there's a chance we do not see it in a museum apart from it apart from the issues of hierarchy Graffiti would not work as well in a museum compared to where it is naturally. Uh, acts of vandalism also, if we if we consider it as art, make more sense in a in a in the streets in the general landscape. So, uh, I guess in that way, museums do really marginalize uh, mass art. Um, I think also returning to Dar's point, uh, we al- we also cannot uh, separate the context of the paintings from uh, from from it, from viewing it because whenever you view at these types of artwork, you cannot remove the context. And because history is involved, you have to also take note of the actors, the subjects, and what was happening during that time period. So one gallery that has a certain agenda regarding its history is the Gallery of Art. So throughout the years, we can see different types of artwork presented by artists and all of these show sensational events because traditional history wants to show that we, the Filipinos, underwent all these types of different atrocities and uh, oppression from the imperialist countries that colonized us. And because of this, there is a certain message of nationalism that they want to show. They want to show that because we are all oppressed, uh, we can all band together as one country and unite. Um, Another issue that is being presented by the museum is shown in the Gallery of Religion. Uh, It is important to note that a lot of these works were commissioned, but even if they were commissioned, you only see one type of religion, and most of them are Catholic religions. But what about the other minorities of the country? We don't see much about uh, Islam, and uh, pre-colonial art is minimal or to none at all. 
And um, we also can't forget that there is a certain uh, sense of el elitism to art. And that, that's why uh, the National Museum of Fine Arts has its own patron, the GSIS. And uh, Matthew, what do you think about that? Like I mentioned earlier, I mean, all the, I guess, every institution has their own political stance and set of beliefs. And since um, the GSIS, like, sort of pat has, a, has their own collection or, like, patrons the, the museum, uh, it begs the question, like, are these, is the view of the museum affected by those who are funding it? Because, of course, those who fund the museum, I don't think, anyone they would put anything that would sort of m maybe like stain their reputation or um i guess it's just natural for people to defend themselves or institutions so then there's always the question of those like how does the museum respond to those who fund them also thank you guys so much for sharing your points um given given what you just said about um um, art being social, social cultural and political. Uh, what can you now say about the definition of a museum based on our case study? So based on our experience and our arguments, um, you can say that museums aren't objective. So no matter what, there will there will always uh, there will always be a perspective based on what they choose to present and what they choose to leave out. So yes, museums are repositories of cultural heritage, but it uh, presents a message or a, spe or a specific identity of the people it represents. Unfortunately, however, the identity represented is that of the elite, of the elite. but in other ways, the political ones can serve the masses. So with this, um, do you guys think that the definition can change in the future? Um, if so, why do you think? Uh, I really think that museums are reflections of our society. And until society can figure out a way to change itself, then museums will change the way they will museums will change the way they are also as long as society does change itself. But so maybe in the future when you know uh, politics change, economies change, maybe museums will change with them also. But uh, since I think that's unlikely. I don't think museums, the definition for what the museum should be will change anytime soon. I feel like there's also debate, the debate for if art should be just for art or if art should be like political. And that has been going on for a really long time already. And I guess the viewpoints of people change with it too. So maybe the definition of the museum could also be prone to um, changing in that, in that spectrum, I guess. It's not whether it's like purely political or purely for art, but I feel like uh, with time it'll sort of fluctuate. Like sometimes it'll be the definition will go more for art for art. Sometimes it will be more political, depending on the current times. Um, you mentioned that um, it, it's kind of vague, like the definition of the museum. But uh, I think that's also. Um, a good thing in a way because it leaves space for institutions to um, define themselves. So, you know, for example, the National Museum of Fine Arts could have, um, could represent or uh, a di a, could represent some th a something that is different from, uh, for example, um, the Metropolitan Museum in New York, maybe. So, yeah. Well, I think now in the 21st century, there have been a lot of platforms where people are able to voice their uh, concerns, their beliefs. And I think the museum is now taking a stand on what platforms they should create, what message they want to give out. It's not, I believe that it's not, uh, no longer are the museums taking a quiet stance about it because a lot of things in this world are happening right now. There are a lot of uh, movements, messages that people are trying to put out. And I believe the museum is a good medium for those messages to be put out, whether it may be political, environmental, or, or social. But again, it doesn't mean that all the art for history and art for culture is lost. 
rather it can be mo- elevated to a better uh a better uh medium for us to promote these messages how about you ally what do you think well going back to like the definition of the museum uh, or the newer definition of the museum i think that it's good that they updated it because as we said it's reflective of society and we shouldn't be stuck in the traditional functions of a museum because it's very outdated um and just because we the the museums are taking a stance doesn't mean that they can't cater to their traditional functions of educating the people um preserving artifacts because they can still do that while also emphasizing uh humanity or uh, raising up social justice and they have a platform and then they should use it because museums are political whether they take the masses side or they take the side of the elite or wh- whether they set it out um because no matter what they do um politics will always be attached to it already just the fact that they're being uh, funded by certain people they're located at a certain place they're representing specific nationalities or identities that's already a perspective in itself and they should just utilize this platform um and make the best of it to uh push for better movements and for a better message across So thank you all for sharing. Um, your experience at the National Museum of Fine Arts has helped you understand the definition and debate and further affirmed your stances on museums having a social, cultural, or economic and political purpose. So examples of these are Spalarme of Juan Luna, um, the gallery showing the atrocities of war. Um, here they show the effect of colonial rule and sending a message out to its viewers. Um, important points for discussion. The purpose of famous conservative Um, artist Amar Solo and his paintings, why the masses as a subject, um, and why is it painted by someone from the elite? Or another point is pieces. Are the pieces at the museum like dependent on who's funding it? Why, are th- why these famous artists only rather than the art by the masses? So these pieces of contemporary art um, are a testament to the current definition where they exhibit and enhance understandings of the world aiming to contribute to human dignity and social justice, global equality, and planetary well-being. So in sum, yes, to you guys, it promotes um, culture and history. But on top of that, of course, there is also integration with art for political reasons and purposes. So panelists, any final words before we close our discussion? I think that art in itself is political. So why should museums also not be political? Um, I think also it's important to note that even though museums portray cultural heritage, it's very underrepresentative of minorities, the underprivileged, and the masses. So uh, it's like a, it's more of a word of thought, and it's that oh, you s- you see like uh, a certain elite, like a certain type of perspective only, but if it's supposed to embody the identity of Filipinos and their whole culture, then shouldn't it include more of the different perspectives? Our thinking of politics also should not be limited to just the museum space. After we go to a museum, we should really pay attention to what's outside the museum because, again, that's what uh, museums are for. It's to help us generate thoughts and to help us uh, engage in critical thinking. I'd like to um, further emphasize what Ally said earlier when she mentioned that museums could fulfill their traditional definition and the new one at the same time while being political. And what Biboy mentioned that it should include um, uh, the artworks of the masses too. Because I feel like it's their responsibility to present everything. Like While having a political view on things, they should also be able to Uh, be representative of everyone and um, show the whole story. But then again, that's a little bit difficult. Because um, going back to patronage again, the museum is funded by donors and by the government. So, for example, we're never going to see works against the government. Um, for example, works about EJK. We've seen a lot of it on the streets. As Louis said, there are spaces outside of the museum showcasing them. But I don't think we're going to see them inside museums. I mean, um, funded by the government, showcasing works against the government. And this is where we kind of see the contradiction of they want to be political, but then it's against the uh, well-being of the investors or the... I think that 
uh, maybe now we won't see stuff about EJK because I guess the government wouldn't want to put them there also. But I feel like art also transcends everything. So one example was the during the Marcus period. Of course, during the Marcus period, you wouldn't see any anti-Marcus sentiments in the museum. But now there's a gallery in the art museum which presents all the political and social commentaries at that time, uh, showing both sides, both the Marcuses and the uh, uh, Aquinos. Sorry. So then, um, eventually, I think that it'll be able. We'll be able to see it too in the museums. To add to that, I think that museums are already taking its first step in making it more active and more involved with uh, our community. So I feel like, yes, politicals are also taking, uh, the museums are also taking a very political stance, but I hope that it would continue in the future as well, not just a first step basis. All right, thank you panelists for joining me today. Oh, that's all the time we have together. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Alexi and see you next Thursday for Thursdays at David's. <laughs>